Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Software Architecture in London. I'm here with Giannis from Software Improvement Group. Giannis, how are you doing? Fine, very well, thanks for asking. So we've been, you've been around for a while with us, and I'd like you to explain to me what does the Software Improvement Group do? Yeah, essentially we start from uh, evaluating the quality of the code that our clients produce, and then we take this evaluation, the results of this evaluation, and we go to their management, to a CIO or a COO, and we explain them what's going on in their IT, in the IT side of their organization, and then what they need in order to improve the situation there, how much uh, time they need to invest, how much money, how many people do they need to uh, bring in in order to, uh, to improve things on, uh, on the IT side. So in, in every project, there are typically four variables that are in play, time, cost, quality, and scope. It sounds like you guys have looked at the quality aspect. And are those other three going to be traded off a little bit? or? Because quality, you don't want to trade off on, or what? Uh, well, you you want to have a balance in everything. As we at SAG, we say we would like our clients to, to get their software right, so not to get an excellent software from a technical point of view, but at least it should be of a high quality or uh, at a high level, in order to be able to change it uh, uh, more qui uh, quickly or to fix a bug in a quicker way. So. Uh, you don't want the perfect software from a technical point of view, but you want uh, software in good condition so you can easily change and adapt it in, let's say, regulations, new business requirements, uh, less downtime, this kind of thing. Well, so in today's business, though, we're, we're, we're hearing about continuously deploy. Mm -hmm. So it's always on the train to be deployed. Yes. So where are you interjecting quality? Is it always in every phase of that? How, how do you get quality inserted into a continuous environment? Um, first of all, we also help our clients to, to, to build this continuous deployment chain, this flow, as uh, we were talking this morning in the, in the keynotes. Um, but the other thing that we do is that we help our clients establish some gateways, some quality gateways as we call them. And, and, and so there are certain points that the code that the developers commit to their repo uh, is going to be checked against our guidelines, and if it uh, uh, meets the criteria, then it will the flow will continue. If it doesn't meet, and uh, the team is very strict, then the developer needs to take the code back, fix it, and then commit it again. And so you have a tool that works with repos in GitHub. Yes, is that yes, correct? Yes, exactly. We have a Better Code Hub uh, tool, which you can access in bettercodehub.com actually, and uh, you can play with it because there is a freemium version. So if you have your own. GitHub repo, you can connect and play with it, and it's fully integrated. So every time you push your code, then you get uh, you get a feedback from our tool. A score. A score. So it's in, in 10. Uh, one out of 10 is really bad, and 10 of out of 10 is excellent. We advise our clients to go somewhere around 8 out of 10. So at least they have some, uh, some they are above average, let's say, when it comes to the quality. And uh, it, it, it is being by, uh, used by teams in the way that you uh, suggest. So part of the continuous deployment, part of the flow, and then somebody checks the score, and if the code is uh, not, a place com not compliant, then it, uh, it's being sent back to the developer to uh, correct it. Make it eight out of 10 and then uh, recommit it. So in, in your experience with working with companies, are there some common patterns or some common themes of things that they could do better to make their code work better, be more efficient, what, whatever it may be they're looking for? Yes, so the first pattern we see is the lack of communication, and it's kind of surprising. Uh, Human communication. Yes, 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 because for instance, we may have a discussion with uh, two guys from the team, and we uh, agree on the standards and agree on our model and how we're going to work together with them, but then this information is not being passed uh, to the rest of the team, or it's not being delegated. And then you have this discussion that you need to communicate those things to your uh, colleagues. The other thing we see is that the lack of cooperation be uh, between the developers. So, okay, our, what we do as experts and our tooling helps because it gives you a score, but on the other hand, the team needs to collaborate to improve their code and meet the standards. So if they don't collaborate, they don't do peer reviews, pair programming, they don't spend time with each other, then it's also difficult to achieve the desired level of quality. So these are the, the two things we see from a human perspective, let's say. Then the third is, of course, always the business pressure, the time pressure. So everybody wants everything yesterday, of course, and they want a lot of things. And I think that methodologies like the agile development or the extreme programming are, are, are helping towards that direction so that business and IT need to work together, 
But if you ask me, I mean, these methodologies are nice. We, of course, we uh, applaud them and we want our clients to uh, uh, enforce them, uh, not enforce them, but to adapt them, let's say, in their organization. But mainly what we, we say is that business and IT, they need to collaborate. They, and it's a matter of philosophy. We, you can apply any kind of methodology. And if the, the philosophy is not right, then the methodology is not going to be applied in the right way. So you can, you can say, uh, we're doing agile and you're just doing waterfall, but in a different mode. Um, yeah, so these are the, the, the these are the patterns that we see. So I noticed you you use the word enforce and then you backed off on that. Yes. Is that because in most environments when you try to enforce a standard or a methodology, you're going to get resistance? Yes, I think yeah. that the the uh, the teams, the developers, even the vendors or the integrators that our clients have, they need to adapt it. They need to uh, to to kind of uh, agree with that and and then you can have maximize your impact because if you try to enforce something to someone then usually it backfires and my, our experience is that we're getting paid by our clients to help them improve their system and have an impact in order to have an impact you have to work with people and the people need to feel that they uh, they are part of the game they're not against that they're not against the wall or against the tool that rates their work they need to uh, become part of it so it, in, in your in your experience with building better software and that's what you help your customers yes. do is build better software isn't training like the key ingredient for them to build better software I mean that they're all in the same understanding of yes. what we're doing what we're trying to accomplish uh, yeah we we, we began realize we began realizing this three or four years ago so usually our clients were telling us you know you're doing excellent work telling us what how are the systems are doing from a technical point of view what are the points of attention but hey can you do something about our people can you train them in your methodology can you help them to understand the, the, the basics or the essentials for having a code of good quality so that's why we create this we call quality software development uh, training program that also leads to a professional certification and uh, we teach developers exactly those things the, the basic the most common guidelines that they need to follow in order to make sure that they have a code base which is clean which is easy to change, easy to fix, and uh, it go it 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 it, it really complements nicely our uh, our services and also the way our clients perceive us. Because from what we see now, when we work closer with them and we train them to our methodology, then also you get it's easier to get their buy-in because now it's not like a a, a model that it's it's uh, you you don't understand it or it's like a black box for you. We just open it, you, we explain you how this works and what are the elements of the model and then how you can work uh, using the model in your favor. And that, uh, that uh, helps us also to uh, remove the barriers or the impediments from uh, improving the code. And so that's key for organizations to have everyone on the same page, using the same terms, understanding where e they're going. Exactly. Yes, that's a nice thing because what we see team leads, they like this kind of training for the junior developers because it's an, it's nice for their onboarding process. So this is how we all work, this is the pro, this is the standard, this is the certification, and then everyone is kind of the same page and they start using the same terminology and also they kind of easier align with our consultants because then we all uh, speak the same language. Which so is what, 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 when, when a CIO comes to you guys, what is their typical request? We have bad software, or we don't understand how to do agile, or we're trying to adapt to the market changes. What what is the common theme you hear <coughs> from the C level people or the uh, courageous executives? Well, in the previous years, I would say uh, it was like we have bad software. Can you help us? Nowadays, uh, it's like uh, we have bad software, and we want your help and uh, tell us what we need uh, to do but they uh, that but uh, the challenge now is not to tell them how bad their software is because yeah, some years ago it was for them really useful to know how bad it is but not how to fix it but now the most important thing is how can we fix it and how can you work together with our team in order to fix it because we know it's bad you, we don't need a consultant to tell us that the system is bad and we we can tell you a thousand of examples why it is bad the point is can you help us fixing it and, and make sure we don't do it again in yes, the future? Yes, yes, Like exactly. preemptively, like we now understand what we're doing? Is yes. that That's really the goal, isn't it? Exactly. Um, and But in the previous years, the, the, it, it was more important for them to get the insight on how bad it is. But now it's the question changes. 
in the sense of how we can improve in the long run and we don't repeat the, the mistakes of the past. So speaking of changes and not repeating the past, if you and I sit down 12 months from now mm -hmm. here in London next year right. and have this conversation, what changes for SIG and what do you hope changes in the whole landscape of software development? Um, first of all, we hope that uh, people will interact in a better way bit, uh, with each other and uh, there is more communication. Also, that the management pays more attention and they invest in the well-being of their software developers and their happiness, as we were discussing also in this uh, conference. Uh, and we as SIG, what we would like to see uh, for ourselves is, uh, of course, um, yeah, to uh, and, uh, enhance our, our consulting services with more, let's say, benchmark with more data that might be useful for the managers, so to give them more perspective. And on the other, on the other hand, when it comes to the technical side of things, the developers, we would like to see more developers adapting our training program, more developers using our uh, better code hub tooling, so more developers actually uh, and, uh, embracing our uh, way of thinking and our methodologies, and the rest will follow. Excellent, Giannis, we look forward to that yes. conversation about yes. building better software. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mike. Nice, nice, nice talking to you.